feet. Yes. That means yes. eye problems are under my feet. Yes. That means back issues are under my yes. feet. Yes. That, that means failing kidneys are under my feet. Yes. Amen. Yes. That means even rebellious children are under my feet. Yes. Right? Amen. That means difficulty in your marriage is under your feet yes. now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Enemies under my feet. Because I have chosen life, both me and my descendants shall live. Praise the Lord. We got a little yeah. tiny infant. God bless you guys. And congratulations. Congratulations. I saw that little baby. Yeah. Hallelujah. Tiny, tiny. How old is the baby? A month. Wow. Just a baby, baby. Oh, yeah. He's probably never heard shouting before. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know all of a sudden I'm like hearing this, like, this sounds like an infant's cry. Oh my goodness, so sweet. Time to eat? What do you think? <laughs> we got, my husband and I, we got four children. We've got two grandbabies and another one on the way. We love grandbabies, we have children. All right, so because I've chosen life, both me and my descendants shall live. I love this scripture. Because I have chosen life, both me and my descendants shall live. That is Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. You can write that down. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 19. Because I've chosen life, and you need to say it with confidence, say it with authority. Because I have chosen life, both me and my descendants shall live. And I mean live to the fullest. I mean live and give God glory. I mean live in the abundance. I mean no area in your life are you going to allow the enemy that comes to kill, still, and destroy to kill, still, and destroy. Because you're here. And you're and the word says right here. So you stand on the promises of God that are yes and amen. They will not return unto you void. Right? God speaks and he acts. He promises and he fulfills. He does not lie. Turn to your neighbor and say, God does not lie. His word does not lie. His word is eternal. Turn to your other neighbor and say, His word is everlasting. His word is flawless. His word is flawless. Jesus is the word. The word became flesh. And the word walks amongst us. And the word was walking. We saw it with our very own eyes right here. Right here. Tonight. Because the word is dunamis power. His dunamis power in and through us. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. I titled tonight the surpassing greatness of God's power in me. Mm -hmm. Say it over yourself. The surpassing the greatness, greatness of God's power in me. I'm going to read from Ephesians chapter 1, starting in verse 19 to the end, to 23. And it says this. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principalities and all power and all might and all dominion and in every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet Amen. and gave him, says to be head over all things in the church. He says, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. So I carry exceedingly great power, the exceedingly great power of Christ in me. Do how many of you guys have a revelation of that? That you carry the exceedingly great power of God in you. What are you doing with that power? Amen. What are you doing with the power of the Holy Ghost? Because God wants you to use it. God yes. wants you to walk in it. Amen. God wants you to exercise it. But, the, you have, but first, you've got to actually realize it. You've got to actually realize it. You've got to actually know who God is in you. I carry the resurrection power in me. Say it over yourself. I carry the resurrection power in me. That means life-giving power in you. That means calling dead things forth in you. This is the kind of power God says is in you. 
Amen. How many of you guys understand that God gives assignments? He gives assignments to us, right? And so when you're on an assignment, who is the giver of the assignment? God. The Lord Almighty, right? Yeah. And his word is his instruction, correct? Yeah. And he's already told us that there's an exceedingly great power in you. So I want you to recognize that when you go through, when we go through this book of Ephesians like we've been going through, and we're taking our sweet time, Holy Ghost time, because I really want you to get in your spirit, man, how powerful God is in you. And when you step out and say, if that power has been made available to me, then what stops me from really seeing the things that Jesus did? Fear. Fear. That's what stops you. Amen. Fear. Right? Unbelief. That's what stops us. Yes. Right? Listening to the wrong voice. Yes. Bottom line. Listening to the wrong voice. But today is a new day. Say, today I'm listening to the Spirit of the living God. Because if God says there is a surpassing great power of God, it's not my power, it's God's power. But it's in me, so therefore now it is God's power that he's given me. So it is my power. Amen. It's Christ in me. We're one. Yeah. You're one with the Lord. You are one yeah. as Jesus is, so are you. So that power that you're supposed to walk in is this dunamis power that God wants you to go forth and be his assignment here on earth. Yeah. When you see, like we just saw, we just saw God's power at work. Yeah. We had a choice, did we not? Could we have just said, okay, well, we'll wait for another time. We'll, we'll uh, just lay hands, pray once, and settle for a little bit of an improvement. Mm -hmm. No, you pray and you pray. The Lord says to pray. He says to pray again. He says to keep on praying, yes. right? Yes. Knock. Yes. When you knock, seek, when you pray, you're supposed to keep on praying. The door shall be opened yes. unto yes. you. Yes. So when we ask God for a blessing, when we ask God to open up our understanding about this verse, verse 19, the surpassing great power of God in me. You've got to know that he wants to manifest his power through you. As long as he has found a vessel that he knows will not steal his glory, as long as he knows that you will continue to press in and give God the honor. He is looking for vessels that says, I want to please you. I don't want to shortchange myself. I am not going to shortchange myself. So Lord, if the word says it, then I should see it operating in my life if I take those risks, mm -hmm. if I take those steps. It's not any good just to know the truth but do nothing with it. When we know the truth, right, it's the truth that you know that's going to actually set you free, Amen. right? Amen. So we actually, we, we get to walk in this. We get Amen. to walk in this. So infirmity, you carry infirmity destroying power. Sometimes when you just word it a little differently, it just makes more sense. You carry infirmity destroying power. Jesus put all things under your feet. Just turn to Ephesians 2 6. Because you know it's all it's all under Jesus' feet. We just read it. But it's also under your feet. When you go to Ephesians 2 6, you'll see that you have been positioned in the seat of royalty, above all powers, and above all principalities. And so therefore, as he is, so are you. It's pretty exciting. The Christian walk is pretty exciting. Amen. 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 Exceeding. So I define this word. Exceeding is to surpass. It's to excel. It's to exceed. It's to run beyond. Uh, great is vastness, immeasurable, and limitless. Amen. Amen. Uh, and then power, miraculous power, strength, and ability to perform dunamis power, inherent power. Power residing in us as God's given right. Okay, we're going to repeat that. Okay. We're going to repeat that whole thing. Okay, are we ready? Are we all focused? Yes. Okay, they're all going to be just fine over there. They're going to be all just fine. I see your eyes. <laughs> no, but listen to this. Okay, Exceedingly great power. I said exceedingly. Exceedingly is to surpass. Yes. This is the kind of power that you carry. It's exceeding. Yeah. It, it goes beyond 
status quo. It goes beyond any limitation. There's no limits. It's uh, over and above, right? It's exceeding. Mm -hmm. It's vast. Okay, great. It's vast. It's immeasurable. You can't measure it. It's limitless. You, you can't limit it. In other words, don't limit it, Amen. right? And then how about this? Power. It's inherent. Mm -hmm. It's this inherent power that is residing in us as God-given power. It's God-given power. It's in you. Amen. In other words, you don't do anything to deserve it. You just said yes to Jesus. Amen. When you said yes, yes to Jesus, it is God's divine endowment upon your life. Amen. How many of you would say yes? Yeah. I, yeah. I recognize I, it, and I, and I want to walk in a greater portion of that. Yeah. I want to see sure. Yeah. Yeah. Because honestly, honestly, we are not, there's a mentality of Christians that Christians are defeated, uh, full of all these problems, and just discouraged and depressed. But I'll tell you what, it's God's inherent power in you that gives you joy in the morning to get up again. Yeah. When everything is not going well. Right? It's God's divine nature, His divine endowment unto you because you're sons and daughters of the king, Amen. to stand up in the face of adversity and say, but God, because of God, I will prevail. Amen. It is God. See, we just think of, oh, you know, power to heal the sick. How about power for you to walk as a godly Christian, fearing yes. the Lord your God, standing in a right alignment and not taking the enemy's pain? Amen. How about being on fire for what you know to be true, which Amen. is the love of God for you? Amen. How about walking in God's supernatural increase? Amen. Because you know that God is so, so faithful. Amen. Amen. So when you recognize Amen. this is inherent power and it resides in me, mm -hmm. say it over yourself. It resides, it resides in me. on the inside in me. of me. God given. No one can take. Because God, they didn't give it, but God's given it to you. Amen. So I want you to think about this for a moment. What are you going to do with this incredible power that God has given you? What is going to change in your life? How are you going to walk different? Well, how are you going to exercise this? How are you going to walk in this? Because I'll tell you, the enemy tries to come to take what is not rightfully his. But if he can fool you, and it'll work on your emotions. If he can fool you enough, then you know what? This right that is yours as a son and as a daughter of Christ, because of Christ living in you, right? If he can come in, and if he can just phrase it in a way to where it becomes mm -hmm. deceptive and now all of a sudden you fall for the same old, same old story. How many of you guys know what I'm talking about? Oh, yeah. The same old, same old. We call it familiar spirits sometimes, don't we? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they're familiar to us, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't recognize them, right? But let me tell you, if the veil has been torn in two and if the scales have come off our eyes, which they have, Jesus has already taken care of that, right? So if that's true, then guess what? You get to walk in a newness tonight. Amen. You get to walk in a newness tonight. And even with what just happened Amen. with you, yes. right? I believe that prophetically, that is true for every yes. single one in this Amen. room. Not Amen. just in the, in the natural, yes. right? Physical, but in the spiritual. These are spiritual things I'm talking about. Yes. These are spiritual things. Yes. There is greatness. Yes. There is increase for you, for all of you. And, and I'm talking about walking as a son or a daughter that the devil is afraid of. I'm talking about walking as something Somebody that has been so empowered with God's Holy Spirit that knows it's God's surpassing great power in me. It surpasses what's normal. I don't walk in normal. Do you walk in normal? Stop walking in normal. It's time for you to walk above that. I don't care if everybody likes you, agrees with it, or even understands it. God has given you such an incredible gift. Such an incredible mm, gift. Amen. We're not going to change. We're not going to exchange it for something else. That's right. It surpasses all limitations. Amen. How many of you know? Okay, you'll come up, you and then there'll be some kind of a limitation. Usually, it's mm -hmm. in the mind. A limitation, <laughs> you know, and you're already disqualifying yourself. Mm -hmm. You're already disqualifying the victory. Well, we need to stop that. Mm -hmm. We need to stop doing that and, and recognize if God is for me, who can be against me? Say to yourself, if God is for me, who can be against me? If God is for me, then no one can be against me because God will not lie. He speaks and he acts. He promises and he fulfills, right? Amen. When you get to say that in confidence and the enemy realizes this is that you really mean what you're saying, that's when you start walking in a greater measure of victory. That is when you start walking in that greater measure of victory. Amen. Amen. Amen.
the power of God mm -hmm. in me, immeasurable, miraculous, mm -hmm. and a privilege. Let's say it together. The power of God in me, it's immeasurable, it's miraculous, and it's a privilege. See, God is building our house, individually and collectively. God is building our house based on His perfect nature. Amen? Uh, based on his impeccable character. Based on his immeasurable power. I love that. It's immeasurable. No one can measure it. No one can limit it. No one can stop it unless you allow it. Right? Amen. And and it's bestowed into the life of every believer. It's the same. Stop looking at it and say, well, that's Jesus. No, that's you. Stop looking at it and say, well, that's the way Jesus walked. No, that's the way we walk. That's the way we should walk. Amen? Come on. I don't make these things up. I don't make these things up. We just had on Thursday, we just had her shoulder torn, muscle torn in her shoulder. And she walked in with pain. And let me tell you, in a moment, in a moment, God just touched her and healed her, restored. And she said, oh my gosh, the MRI said I needed surgery. That's an intense surgery. That's a difficult surgery. And it doesn't always come out right. Okay? It doesn't always come out. But... The greatest physician of all, Jehovah is in the house, and he's here. He's here to take care of you. You're his beloved. You're his children. Faith rising up. Let faith rise up in you. Believe the words. The word says only believe, and you will receive. You're going to receive everything that he promised already in the word of God. But only believe. Amen? Amen. So it's our new nature to walk. Amen. To walk in this exceedingly great power. It is your new nature. You're a new creation in Christ, right? Yes. So it's our new nature to walk in this exceedingly great power that's ingrained in us. And I love that. It's ingrained in us by Christ's shed blood. If something is ingrained in you, doesn't it become pretty much like second nature? If something is ingrained in you, right? So the reason that I'm saying this these words is because I want you to see just how one you are with the power of God. God wants Amen. to raise up an end time army that is not afraid of all the limits that the world puts on. Right? God is raising up an end time army that doesn't look at all the statistics and then limits what God wants you Amen. to speak. He wants you to rise up and walk in boldness. He wants you to rise up and recognize I contain the dunamis power of God. That's who we are. The power of the Holy Spirit in us. The power of the Holy Spirit in you. In each one of you. And so really, we have to have a mindset shift. There needs to be a shift in our mind. Because when our minds get a hold of this, it's incredible. You're looking for how you can allow God to move through you. Yes. That's the shift. Instead of going, well, that's, you know, people accept and they tolerate things that they shouldn't tolerate. They accept and they tolerate things that they shouldn't tolerate. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Uh, just, you know, I didn't mention this healing, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you now. Um, so this was with my three-year-old grandbaby, my three-year-old grand grandbaby. Her mom had... Um, her knee was really hurting her. She came from work and she said, she says, I don't know what's happened, but you know, the past, you know, I forget how many days she said, but her knee has been really, really bothering her. And so she said, she's on her left feet all the time, right? So she's a, a surgery nurse. And so, uh, so I said, well, let's pray. My grandbaby was there with me. I said, let's pray. So of course, what did, what did Abigail do? She immediately placed her hands, she's three, she immediately placed her hands on her mama's knee. Amen. And she started to pray her famous little prayer. And she says, and it's so cute. And, um, you know, she just repeats the same little prayer that she's kind of has stuck in her head. And um, But you know what? Did not care that, you know, that it had nothing to do with healing. No, because you know what? He knows the intent of our hearts. He knows, he knows what we're going to say even before we even say it, right? And so, so she puts her hand on her mama's knee with total faith. I, I was watching her face. There was no unbelief there. Amen. Why should there be? That happens to adults, unfortunately. 
but say no more to me. Uh-uh, uh-uh. I want to be like a child. Yeah. And so she puts her hand on her mom's knee, and she just matter-of-factly prays her little prayer, you know, and uh, and then, okay, she gets in, and she goes, how do you feel? <laughs> her mom kind of just like, well, uh, let me check it. And so she starts to walk. I'm cracking up. I'm sitting there. I'm just laughing. This is awesome. I know. And so her mom talks. She goes, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. She goes, it's better. Right? And Abby, Abby's gone by this point. She's, like, she's over here playing with her choice. Of course it's better. She didn't expect anything else. Amen. She didn't expect any other word. That was the testimony she already knew. Because she knows her father. Her heavenly Father. Amen. You guys, this has got to be us. This has to be us. Amen. Because we know our heavenly Father Amen. loves us so much. Because Jesus has already shed his blood for us. Because he's already paid the price. Because he says, I've given you this great, exceedingly precious promise. Right? I've given you this power. My power is now made perfect in you. What are you doing with it? Would you come expectingly? I don't care if you don't know how to pray. I don't care if you don't think you have the greatest prayer. Prayer language. I don't care if you don't. You know, I'm not sure how to pray. And stop, because God knows the intent of the heart. Amen. And even as with this yeah. three-year-old, the mom walks around. She goes, "I said, well, how are you feeling?" She goes, "Mom, I have no pain." She goes, "It's totally yeah. gone." She's like, oh, "Thank oh, God!" Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so you know, Amen. I say that because now in the mouth of babes, God's ordained praise, yeah. right? So, well, we teach, we train up, and we teach the little ones, right? Yes. And, and, and when you see as a child God moving, you come with an expectation that my daddy, my Abba, is my great provider. And whatever it is that is needed, he will provide. I can't tell you how many times she'll say she's lost something, and she'll say, well, mommy, let's just pray. And, you know, her mom tells me, she goes, oh, my gosh, she's telling me to pray, you know? And so, you know, it's awesome. It's beautiful yeah, that we get to train. So how about us? Yeah. The Bible says, the word says we need to amen. become like children. Yeah. We need to become like children. Yeah. This isn't just prayer for healing. This yeah. is prayer and, and expectation for everything, guys. It's for those that are prodigals. It's for those that you're still praying for. I pray in faith. I don't care how long it takes. I don't care how long. I don't care what difficulty. We are praying in faith for those that God has given us, and we're believing that that day is coming. For the light bulb to turn on, for the scales to be removed, and for them to walk in their calling. And we've got to have this tenacity within us, because this is the surprise passing great yes. power yes. in us. God's power mm -hmm. in us. Yes. We are seated above principalities and powers. We're, we're seated above uh, rulers of darkness and dominion, which is the invisible evil power mm -hmm. who deceive and manipulate human behavior and advance satanic, mm -hmm. satanic strategies. That's what, it, that's what they're doing. They're trying to advance satanic strategies mm -hmm. and they manipulate human behavior so we know that so here's how let's just make it real plain let's just make it real plain um, you're fine and all of a sudden you just get so discouraged and you don't know what hit you well wake up you do know what hit you you do know what hit you actually it's an assignment to try to rob you of your the great exceedingly precious promises the power of God in you it is up to us to recognize these assignments and say oh no you're not going to manipulate you're not going to dominate you're not going to control my emotions but if you don't recognize you're you're going to allow it right right we have to be able to we have to be able to gain that advantage by, by becoming familiar with what's familiar with us okay somebody Amen. needed to catch Amen. that we need to become Amen. familiar with what's familiar with us yeah i'm going to say it again until you get it we need to become familiar with what is familiar with us there are certain things that are familiar certain certain spirits they're familiar to you yeah they watch, they study you. They yeah. know how to push your buttons. Yes. They know how to get you deceived, discouraged, and depressed. Oh, yeah. They know how to cause you to walk with your head low. Oh. They know how to put shame and condemnation on you. Yeah. You don't even know what hit you. Mm -hmm. They're familiar to you. Yeah. 
You need to become familiar with what's familiar to you. Why? So that you can get rid of it. So that you can recognize it's time to rise up above it. So that you can go, no, 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 no. I actually already have great surpassing power. That power is surpasses yours. It's doing in this power. You take the body over and you cancel it in Jesus' name and you walk in the joy of the Lord, which is true. Right? So we have to become familiar with what's familiar to us. When you become familiar with what's familiar to you, you're going to start seeing victory in your life. Amen. You're going to start seeing a level of victory that you did not know before. You really will. So, Father, right now I decree that any place, all familiar spirits that try to bind up this church and those members of this church, Father, right now, let the exposure begin. Reveal to them the areas. Reveal to them the strongholds. Let those strongholds fall right now. Let them come off the scales, like scales off of their eyes in Jesus' mighty name. Let them recognize right now that there is a great, exceeding, surpassing power available to them. So never again are they going to walk in the way that they used to walk in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 22. I'm gonna, we're going we're gonna to wrap this up. Verse 22. It says, and God put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And then let, let me just read this other scripture because then it'll make more sense. Uh, in Ephesians 2, 6. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. And it says here, and raised us up together. And made us to sit in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You are seated in the heavenly places, in the, in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So where are you? You're seated in a position of power, Amen. right? So Amen. if you're seated above it, then you have power over it. I want you to get the visual picture. If you're seated above it, I just read to you that you're seated above it. If you're seated above it, then you have power over it. It doesn't have power over you, if you unless you give it. If you're seated above it, then you have power over it. Say it, over your, say it out loud in your own mouth. If I'm seated above it, then I have power over it. Right now that tries to come against you or your family. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your children. Whatever it might be. Whatever it might be. Maybe it's finances. I want you to think of that very thing right now. That seems to get a grip on your life. On your emotions. On your heart. On your mindset. Right? If you are seated above it, then therefore you have power over it. See, I have power over that thing. That thing is rendered powerless in the mighty name of Jesus. I am victorious in Christ. I am chosen. I am holy. I am blameless. I am adopted. I am accepted. I am redeemed. I am forgiven. I am predestined. I am sealed with the Holy Ghost. You are sealed with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for listening. For more information, please visit our website at Kathy Coppola Ministries at www.kathycoppola.org. You can also visit us at Mighty Wind Broadcasting Network TV at www.mwbn.tv. God bless.